Hey, what's up, everybody? And what's up, Sussex Squad? How are y'all doing today? Y'all, the unthinkable has happened when it comes to Will and to Kate. You guys, the streets are saying that the unthinkable just happened. Will and Kate's happily ever after. The palace. Hi, hi, Chassie. The palace and everybody is saying, or at least giving hints, that baby, the divorce announcement is coming. Now, if you guys don't know, there was an article or a blind item in Crazy Days and Nights that came out in somewhere in June of 2003 that said, you guys, brace yourself, there is a royal announcement. Everybody was wondering what was going on. You guys, Kate going missing. There were always rumors that something happened okay speculation will did something to kate something to kate nobody knew what it was the spanish media said kate was on her sleeping beauty what does that mean they said kate was in some type of induced coma then it turned into a coma okay now there was a in my opinion fake to kate that was spotted yesterday what detail that everybody missed was Carol Middleton was mad. Carol Middleton was so upset in that picture. But sources say Carol Middleton, if you guys didn't see my last video on power struggle, has stepped up to the plate and she is saying, um, no, we don't know what's going on here, but this is not happening. Why is that? Because think about it. Regardless of what you think about Kate and Carol, that is Kate's mom. Carol Middleton is doing what she's supposed to do, especially when you consider the fact that Carol Middleton is broke, 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 broke. William cut off the Middletons. He cut off the moolah. He cut off the money. And everybody was like, how is that possible, him staying with Kate? But then there was also something else going on. You guys, I'm telling you the tea leaves, and then I'm giving you guys the tea. I'm telling you guys the tea leaves. So everybody's like, how is it possible that Kate's your wife and all this stuff is going on? Then there were reports, which everybody say came from Camilla, but maybe they came from William, that there was key jewelry missing. And the last person seen with it, at least in the photos, was Kate. But it wasn't over. There was also that odd struggle between where George was going to go to school at. Why is that so important? Because there is no way that the sitting queen, well, the, the, the future heir to the throne, I don't think the Brits would let be raised by a single mother. The powers that be and William, it's rumored, wanted to get George away from Kate because once George can step into his role as heir and the men, heir and, the men and gray can get into his head, then Kate, she's sidelined. Traditionally, if we look at what happened to Harry, what happened to Princess Anne, what happened to Andrew, Oof, right? They don't care about the spare. They definitely don't care about the third in line, right? Because you are less than the spare. You are just, why are you here, right? So Kate was fighting for George to stay in the house and just go to a day school. William was like, absolutely not. They're going to eat him. There were vicious fights about that. It kept going back and forth. It was decided when they announced that Kate turned up missing, they also announced around that same time, I think a day later, hey, you know what? George is also going to eat him. But then there were odd reports in American news outlets. Just keep this in mind. I'm going to piece it all together. That no, it's not settled. George wouldn't be going to Eaton or Marble. There might be a third college that George is going to. Now, also, what was going on at the same time? This is before Kate went missing. And everybody thought it was just like, ha, 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 laughing at Kate and William. But there seems like there was actually something going on. Case in point, Kate fired all her private secretaries. And every person she tried to hire was from the outside private sector. Now, that in of themselves, Kate could have been a horrible boss. I, I don't know. But there was also that interesting thing of what happened with 
Adelaide Cottage. Okay, also, um, Sussex Squad, I'm going to drop the call and link as soon as I'm done setting up everything because I want to hear what you guys have to say. It'll be an internet call in link. You guys know the deal because we are going to have our second uh, annual Sussex Squad live, but our first annual call in. Okay, I want to hear what you guys have to say. But keep in mind what also was going on. Okay, Adelaide Cottage. Kate moved into Adelaide Cottage. Now, I know what everybody laughed about. Ha, ha, ha. William left you and now you're living in like a little cottage. It was four bedrooms. A lot of people said at that time, Charles was the one being an idiot. And he was punishing Will and Kate by making them move to a small cottage. But when Charles became king and William became Prince of Wales, and William had all of the Prince of Wales portfolio in front of him, Kate stayed in Adderday Cottage. Now, there were reports at that time that Kate and William, and I think this was coming directly from like palace sources, do not, they have a, an old fashioned marriage, much like the queen and Prince Philip, because William is very much the queen's grandson. And the fact that they, William and Kate, much like the queen and Prince Philip, don't sleep in the same room. So we think that, wait a second, Adderday Cottage has one, two, three, four rooms. If Kate and William don't sleep together and there are three children, unless little Louis or Charlotte is sharing a room with their mom, because they assume the King of England isn't sharing a room, that means how's William staying in the same house with Kate? Again, this was all in the background. You also looked at Kate being humiliated by William in public for the last eight months. Every time she tries to touch him, he recoils. He walks away from her. Remember when he was like, hurry it up. When they were at the Queen of Jordan's, uh, the, the Prince of Jordan's wedding, right? It hasn't kept, William's been literally treating Kate, in my opinion, very, very bad. Okay, so let's tie this all together, shall we? There was also, if you go to Twitter, lots of people that live in the helicopter flight path to Kensington Palace saying every night it looks like William's going home, which makes, makes sense because Royal Sources says they don't sleep in the same room. Now, that was enough to make us all go, hmm, that's funny. That's suspicious. You guys, Kate showed up missing for no reason. It's been the longest. They had a fake Kate in the car. The American news outlets were getting it. Carol Middleton made sure to be driving. It was on Windsor or right off of Windsor grounds, so they needed permission. Why? Because it is illegal to photograph a royal or to get paparazzi pics in the UK without permission. How do we know this? Because Chris Ship is on Twitter actually quoting now law. They literally wanted Meghan's whole history right? And to be in the birthing center, where, but now it's illegal for all these things. Chris Ship misquoted California law where he said, unlike California, where you can take pictures of people in a public area. Yeah, but not their house and not their grounds and you can't fly drones. So no, California actually has heavy, heavy, heavy anti-paparazzi laws. But so what happened, right? This picture that's supposed to be Kate doesn't look like Kate to me, but then again, how much do I know, Kate? Half the pictures we see of Kate are photoshopped. And, you know, again, right? So why are people saying that the divorce announcement is coming and it's coming very quickly? Well, I'll tell you why. Because today we just realized that there is an internal war happening in Kensington Palace. The first clue we had was when Kate's people made a statement to TMZ and to page six saying Kate will be there when she gets there. Okay. Now it was very, very snippy, but it was odd that they said Kate's representative because Kate's representative, right? Kate's representative. She doesn't have one, at least as long as she is William's wife. Kensington Palace is her mouthpiece. Now, a lot of people said, okay, maybe that's just like American media. It was some type of miscommunication, right? However, this morning, it was announced by the Royal Guard. First of all, 
the Capalas low key let us know that Kate, as much as they like to poo poo and tell us Americans, um, eh, guidance still stands. She will not be there till at least Easter. They literally announce that Kate, the guards for Trooping of the Color, which happens in June, said that Kate's first royal appearance will be at Trooping of the Color. This was announced in all the American media outlets. Carol Middleton has been doing her best to get into the American media outlets. Think about it, right? Um, the mirror, they're saying, Prince whatever. I see sometimes, not pro-Harry and Meghan, but neutral Harry and Meghan, you know, pro-Palace, they print whatever. The Daily Mail. Sorry, guys. That is in Camilla's pocket. But TMZ paid six American tabloids. Baby, that's up for grabs. And it looks like Carol Middleton has grabbed it. In the U.S. papers, even the new US, U.S. Weekly, Fox News, all the U.S. papers, they all got notice from official royal sources that Kate, her next public appearance will be in Trooping of the Color. That's in June. On top of that, the Royal Guard or whoever actually made an announcement that Kate will be at Trooping of the Color to do whatever presentation they do over there. Who cares? It's all colonialism cosplay. I don't care. But she's going to do something. Okay? Kenton and Pallas then came out and said, that has not been confirmed with us. That's not us. There have long been rumors that whatever happened to Kate, it had to do with William saying that he wanted a divorce. Now, I said it in the last video, but I'm going to say it here. I have a whole royal playlist. Go ahead and check it out if you haven't seen it. I said it yesterday, uh, yes, well, this morning in the video, and I'll say it here. Any thinking person would say, yes, while it is true that you cannot divorce a queen, you can divorce the princes of Wales, and that makes it a very dangerous position. Okay, the princess of Wales, but once you become queen, you cannot divorce Charles. It has been said in the Greek media, is the Greek media, and those are his cousins because you know they come from the Greeks, the ones that loved Hitler. They were sympathizers. I'm just saying it's history. They love their history, they love their blood, blood diamonds, they love their stolen emeralds, they love their stolen robies, right? But you know, they don't like that part of their history. Um, uh, it has been said that Charles has pancreatic cancer. No, nobody knows that that is true. But if it is true, that means Charles has months, not years, to live. Okay? He has months, not years, to live. Now, if all this is true, and I have no reason to believe it's not, if William needs to cut ties with Kate, it would be now more than ever because Kate will become queen in months, not years. Whatever happened between Will and Kate, whatever happened, it was enough that Kate refuses or cannot be seen in public. However, now that Carol Middleton has raised her head, there is a slew of things happening. A fake Kate, or maybe it's the real Kate with a puffy face. I don't really know what happened to Kate. We don't need to see her medical history. It's odd they gave a faraway, blurry paparazzi photo. It looks like Pippa to me. At the very least, someone is contacting American media. Someone is contacting the Royal Guard or Royal Order or whatever at Trooping of the Color. Someone is going rogue and operating with Kate as an independent agent from William. I believe that someone is Carol Middleton. I believe Carol Middleton would not be doing this without Kate's permission. I believe all those rumors that a divorce announcement was imminent in the top of the year. But since Kate disappeared somehow, that was delayed. Let's also not forget William was setting him up as a single father. He was doing events just by himself. He was doing puff pieces about how William's a modern dad with nowhere around Kate. In William's mind, Kate's fulfilled his duty, her duty, 
given him three cute kids. It is now time for him to shine like his head with six pieces of hair in the wind. Now, it's important to notice also, as much as people say, that's not true, that's a team. I do, they're a team. No, they are not. William announced two days or three days after Kate was in the hospital, hadn't even recovered from surgery, hadn't even been released. We just found out she was in the hospital. He announced, I believe it was two or three days, all right? Give or take a few, right? He announced that he was having holding his Earthshot Prize in South Africa. And Kate was not invited. Kate would not be attending. Now, mind you, as much as the palace says, oh my God, blah, 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 with Kate, right? William has been making moves like a solo man. Again, I know what you're saying. Why would William divorce Kate? He has his cake and eat it too. He prunes rose bushes. He can literally entertain, allegedly, right? We don't know if it's true. Rose Hanbury every single night, right? If he, if he so choose, Kate probably wouldn't say anything. Leave it to the Twitter. They said she never said anything in, in the past. So what changed? Well, you have to look at William, his vindictiveness, his entitlement, right? And also, let's be real. In my opinion, his stupidity. See, I figured something out when all this happened with Charles. We've been giving Will way, 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 way too much credit. See, we think he's this evil genius like King Joffrey. He's not. He seems to be a spoiled man child that wants and thinks he deserves power and responsibility, but doesn't want to do the work required. Say what you want about Charles, and there is a lot that you can say about Charles. A lot that you can say about Charles. It's a lot you can say about Camilla. But the one thing you can, can't say about Charles is that the fact that he shirks away from his duty. Whether or not I believe that whole archaic system should fall, Charles holds tight to his duty. He understands, he truly understands that everything they have is smoke and mirrors. He truly understands that he is sitting on top of a pile of gold won on the blood, sweat, and tears of other people. He truly understands that in order for this whole Disney clown show that they somehow attribute to bloodline and nobility for it to keep going, people have, it's make-believe. People have to believe you are real. They have to believe you are valuable. There is no inherent value in everything, right? No, Veronica, it is, sorry. Veronica says prostrate, not pancreatic. Um, no, the Greek media is currently, go translate, Unless you're talking about something else, they currently say that Charles has pancreatic cancer. Charles has been gone for a minute. Camilla took off from work. A lot of people are clowning Camilla saying that she's being lazy. But the one thing that everybody's ignored is Charles has been looking really bad. He's been looking really rough. And the fact that Charles, that workhorse, is taking time off, you think Harry flew over on a red eye straight from California to see his dad be ab abused by the media, clowned by William, all this stuff, even though they won in the end, they were, it was just like chatter, like they were talking trash, da, 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 and then Harry went back to his beautiful life in California. You really think Harry did all that? Even dropped the lawsuit with the Daily Mail? I know what you're saying, not the whole lawsuit, but the most important part, you think he did all that? Because Kate, uh, uh, his dad had some type of curable cancer. I uh, maybe I just don't think so. I, I really do. he rushed to his father's side. I, I think there's something more, but I think the Greek royal rota is closer about whether it's going to be pancreatic or prostate. Pancreatic makes sense. He just had prostate surgery, so why would it be prostate cancer? He has no more prostate. I'm just imagining, right? Okay, now, so let's get into it. Let's get into the theories, shall we? Let's get ready to rumble. Let's get into these theories because like I said, yes, welcome to Sussex Squad. There are different factions of Sussex Squad. You can do when they go low, we go high. Baby, you fight fire with fire. When they go low, 
we meet them where they at. Who started the speculation game? The palace. Who started the, we need to know? The palace. Who started that? Let's talk about people's marriages and whether they're spending time apart and if they can be. Who started that? The palace. Both palaces. Who kept it going for years? The palace. Who, before all this stuff, because you know, this is what I do for a living. I know you guys have jobs. You're saving the world. My job is to read through all this so I can like condense it and make it entertaining so you can have a little escapism. Who, prior to this Kate mess and this Charles stuff, were having their cronies at all the news stations and all the uh, newspaper ads, right the, right, the newspapers, speculate on whether Lily and Archie were real and if they should have their titles stripped from each other. You know that was what was running. I have, the, I'm subscribed to all of them. That's what they were running right before Kate had to go into the hospital. Who, after it came out, was the royal who had concerns, not questions, but concerns about the color of Archie's skin, right? Who came out dressed in all white with headlines that said an all white Christmas. Mama came out begging. Mama came out bragging. Mama came out proud. I am talking about Kate Middleton. So now that things have changed and y'all like, you know, and the Royals were like, ha ha, you guys are, we're playing checkers. We're playing chess because they were really sticking it in for Harry and Meghan, doing everything they could to ruin them. Like they do this to everybody. As soon as karma comes knocking, and karma said, checkmate. Now, everybody on that side wants to say, no, 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 no. We changed our mind. Let's play checkers. Let's play checkers. Oh, no, 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 baby. You in for it now. No, you can't. What, what part of the game is this? You literally start a game I don't want to play. You start cheating at the game. You start winning at the game. We try to withdraw. They don't care. They're out for blood. Then karma turns everything around and says, checkmate. And now y'all want to go back to play in checkers? Oh, no, baby. You in it now. No. You don't, you don't get to start it. Make the rules. And as soon as the rules don't suit you, you roll back. And now some people are like, no, I pray. Baby, my parents did not pay me. Right? They did not pay me growing up. Pay, sorry, pay. They did not pay me mine when I suffered fools. My parents did not raise me to pray for my enemies. Now, I don't have to pray for my enemies downfall. That much is true. But my parents taught me that when it comes to my enemies, pray for the people you love. And when you see karma coming for your enemies, just stand and watch. Because, baby, first of all, it's above you, right? It's above you. Who are we to question the good Lord's plan? I'm not saying you have to pray for your enemy's downfall. That would be bad. But, baby, why are you guys getting involved? Not y'all, but why are people getting involved with karma? No, no, I pray. Pray for what? Let karma, let God do his will. Thy will be done. Who am I to question? Oh, I am just a humble servant. I will stay mute and just watch. I'm not, no, you're not getting. So here's my point. These people, especially Will, Kate, Kensington Palace, Buckingham Palace, William was just the one that we found out pulled away Harry and Meghan's security and wants to make sure he never does. And he knows that they have one of the highest threats outside of King Charles for people wanting to murk them. And y'all praying for these people? Do you not think that? What, what does it say the Bible? Pray for your enemies. I don't know. I, I'm skipping that verse. Anyway, y'all, right? Here is, here is all that's going, right? So you look at it. William of Bruises, William acting, Kate Middleton, fake Kate surfacing, Carol Middleton saying, oh, Kate will 100% be at the Trooping of the Color, to which people say, if Kate can be at Trooping of the Color, why can't she be out now? 
she can't be out now because I don't think she's up in Adam. I think Carol Middleton is trying to ensure that William does not erase Kate from the royal fold. Because think about it. William is petty. He seems to be, at least in all my opinion. He seems to be jealous. He seems to be a tyrant. William, like all the Prince of Wales, suffer from the fact of, at the end of the day, no matter what you do, you're never going to pull headlines like Diana in a new dress, Megan in a new dress, Kate in a new dress. You're just never going to do it. Why? Because at the end of the day, yes, you can have royalists, but the reason they stay on the front page is because women, right? I'm a woman. I am interested in hair, makeup, jewelry. I, I There's nothing to be ashamed about. That stuff is very interesting to me. It, it, there's nothing to be ashamed about it. But women, we tend to know. You tend to, the glamour of it all. When a woman steps out and the bells and whistles are going, the glamour of it all pulls it in, right? Men and women stare, but women are like, oh, what are you wearing? How'd you do that? William, we saw from the first Earthshot Prize, cannot get that. The fact that Kate is saying, or Carol Middleton is saying that she will be at Trooping of the Color and Kensington Palace, let me read this, is putting out quotes saying that was not okayed by them. He didn't say, they didn't say it was untrue. They didn't say that is categorically untrue. We find it, you know how Kensington Palace gets, right? All the world. <laughs> they just said that it was not okayed by them, that it was not signed off on them. What does that let you know? That Kate's camp, used to be Kinsen Palace, but now it's Kate's camp, is signing off on things that have not been run by Kinsen and Palace. What does that let you know? That household is divided. What does that let you know? Kate and K William are no longer a team. What does that let you know? Kate is looking at history. And she's saying, even if you leave me where I stand, I will still come because I still am the Princess of Wales. Will she still be the Princess of Wales if William gets remarried? But who's William going to marry? You know, I know. Here's another thing I think Kate's worried about. I know that a lot of people try to clown William and be like, please, no royal woman, no, no woman of Aristio, right, wanted to marry William. I don't believe that for a second. I really don't because put it like this back then William had hair. Let's be real. William looks a lot different without hair. It's the Royal arrogance. I bet you he wish he had gotten hair implants before it was too late. Once you go bald, you can't get the hair implants, right? It just won't take. So I know he wish he had just been like, forget what these Royals said. I'm taking the hair, but I guess he's like, I'm King. So even if I go bald, you know, it's for peasants to care about the way they look. Right. But William was the king of England back then. That was the most pre prominent monarchy. He was the son of Diana. He had all his hair. He was pretty easy on the eyes, right? One thing the treatment of Meghan and Harry have made me realize when they were in the UK, it seems like that whole Saltine Island, the royalist at least, and the Aristo blood, they would have given, in my opinion, everything they could have for their daughter or somebody in their bloodline to be the Queen of England. They would have given anything. Harry's different. Harry's the spare. I think the Aristio people understood that the type of mistreatment that Harry has to take, the wife would have to take too. Harry's a different situation. OK, without Megan, I think it would have been a far sadder life for Harry. I think it would have been something like Margaret's life. But Megan came and saved her prince and they moved to Madison Cicito. And baby, they are living happily ever after. But William was a different role. And I do believe those, those Aristo families would give anything for their daughters to be the next Queen of England. I don't think that it's going to take as long as people think for William to replace quick Kate. Because just like there's Kate, there's a million people that would like to be Kate. And unlike Kate, they don't have to wait around for years. They don't have to be maligned. They don't have to do this. They can just step into the role and be crown king, queen. Yes, and William is arrogant enough to do that. So let's get into the conspiracy theories. What does everybody think actually happened to Kate? 
No, I have heard. Let me just run them down. None of these have been true, proven true, but let's talk about what the streets are saying based upon information and belief. And I am not asking anyone to take what I say as fact or even to believe me or even side with my opinion. I'm telling you what I heard. Please go do your own research and, you know, we'll see what's what, right? But, right, uh, okay, look, look at this. CBS 4 p.m. News Central Standard Time announced that Kate will be present at the June 8th Color Guard event and then for the King Charles birthday celebration. Tell me there's not an internal civil war. Tell me that there is not a divorce, divorce announcement coming. Tell me that Kate has decided that she will not be erased. And even if William divorces her, she has been humiliated for years. She And then this is not in defense of Kate. This is just from a woman's point of view. She gave you three years, the best years of three children, the best years of her life, countless sacrifices, countless this, countless that. And then you think after you've had your use, you're just going to throw her away and she's going to scurry away. You think you're going to rebuild yourself as single William. And the thing is, single William is still jealous. He doesn't want to share the stage with Kate. He doesn't want Kate to turn into what Diana was for Charles. And I'm not comparing Kate to Diana because, yeah, you guys know my feelings on Kate. But compared to William, compared to William, Kate does have the star power. Kate is the pool. Kate is, you know, ain't my fault that I'm out here getting loose, mama. She, she got the juice, right? She's got the juice, right? Somebody said this, they will cancel events 45 minutes before trooping of the color. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. Listen, maybe, maybe, maybe. But let me just get into these reports and then I'm going to throw up the call in link. If any of you guys want to actually talk about this with me, okay? Um, again, Worley Shady says, it's just going down. The British Army said, if Kate can ride around in her mummies with her mummy, she can get back to work. Interestingly enough, the U.S. outlets were all careful to note that Kate, we'll call her fake Kate, F Kate, no, fake Kate, fake Kate and Carol, or maybe Kate, we'll call her maybe Kate, right? M Kate and Carol, when they were coming in the car, they made a point of saying that they were coming from a school run. They said that they were coming from a school run. They are no longer covering for Kate, for Kate, for William. They don't want anyone thinking that William is by her side, that William is taking care of the kids, that William is doing anything. Why would that be? Does it seem like Kate via Carol is done protecting the crown? There's also that interesting notion of Uncle Gary and uh, celebrity big brother. I don't think that they're worried about Uncle Gary actually um, saying anything about Will and Kate. I mean, uh, Harry and Meghan, because at the end of the day, what could they say? Like, everything they could say about Harry and Meghan has been saved, saved. But what could they say about Kensington Palace? What could they say about William? Perhaps, do you think that Carol may have some ideas in her head about... Um, what to say and uh, what they want. I don't know. I do find it odd that Carol um, actually, at the end of the day, I do find it odd that Carol uh, is even doing this. Okay. Um, and by I say odd, it makes perfect sense when you look at it as a mother, not just protecting her daughter, but also uh, protecting her investment. It has long been rumored that the Middletons literally social client scheme over leverage did all this stuff just so they could at the end of the day just so they could at the end of the day become queen and secure their bloodline now the bloodline's been secure however look at the way william turned against his own mom right how do we know what's going to happen between um george and his mom once the men in gray get a hold of that. Do you know what I'm saying? The Middletons are already treated like commoners, low class, or calling Uncle Gary trash. You know, at the end of the day, the best thing that ever happened to Kate was 
Harry marrying Meghan because Meghan was the buffer. Megan was what everybody focused on. And then Kate became this, you know, lily white princess that could do no wrong, you know? Anyway, um, uh, who is it? Trooping of the Color. Saturday 8th, they made an announcement. Review, they're going to say that uh, the troops are going to be reviewed by Her Royal Highness, the Princess of Wales. They're even selling tickets to this. This is Carol Middleton. This is Kate. So why, if Kate can make this announcement, first of all, why is her first engagement going to be at Trooping of the Color? If that was her in the car, she did not look like herself. Is their bone broken? Is she on steroids? I don't think it's an illness. Just hear me out. I don't think that it was an illness that put her in the hospital because if it was an illness and if this divorce is going down, I believe that Kate would use this for sympathy. She always does. Kate likes to be like coddled. She likes, and again, I'm not saying somebody that's sick is being coddled. Maybe that's the wrong use of words, but Kate is Kate has no problem taking sympathy at all. She has no problem. Okay. Now, here's the funny thing. Carmen Walker said, I understand Kensington Palace was not consulted by the British Army's announcement this morning. It appears the Princess of Wales attendance is not guaranteed at this stage. Kate is making side engagements. She's using her Princess of Wales title on its own. Remember when William made that statement about what was going on in the Middle East and he left Kate's name off of it? Remember this funny article that's been fo uh, floating on Sky News and they are the biggest royalists in the world talking about why is William being dragged in to Kate's health debate? Why is a husband being dragged into an online debate on whether his wife is safe or not? I don't know, William. Why? Why indeed? Let's also not forget the funny things that are going on. Princess Anne's husband has a black eye. Sophie and Edward were taking off for sick. They might have come back today. I don't know. Um, uh, Thomas, that one guy, locked himself in a room and deleted himself. Uh, it is officially under investigation. The cause of deletion has not been determined. I know at first they said it was a, a deletion. However, um, I don't think many deletions get full police inquiries. And if it does, it usually takes 24 hours for them to come out and be like, yeah, we checked. It was definitely a deletion. Let's keep going, right? What are the tweets? I want to read you guys a few other tweets and then we'll go. Um, listen. They say Buckingham Palace versus Kensington Palace. Camilla has left. William's pelting. Kate has gone rogue. Why would Kate go rogue, right? Why would Kate's team literally be leaking stuff behind Kensington Palace's back? People said maybe her and William are beefing. Others are saying her and William are divorcing. And when William told her he no longer wanted to be with her, that is why she spiraled. No matter what you are, if you are a royalist or not, we cannot deny, well, maybe you could. But to me, the last year, William looked like Kate made his skin crawl every time she was around her, every time it touched, right? The Ministry of Defense is making the announcement but not Kensington Palace. A divorce battle, this is from Carmen's granddaughter on Twitter. She's saying a divorce battle is brewing and Kate Middleton is briefing the media on her own. One cannot deny that this is happening. And if you do deny, I would like to know why. Okay? Listen, people are saying that Kinson and Palace no longer speaks for uh, Kate. They are separate entities. Again, when you look at the way she's been downsized, even when William became Prince of Wales, why didn't he give Kate one of the bigger properties to stay at with the children? Why she stuck to that cottage? Did she find out that something happened? And on top of that, now that she's Princess of Wales, William is really feeling himself. And it's just like, you just stay in that cottage. George is going to be out of there. And again, I always said that when George went to boarding school, he would announce the divorce just like Charles and Diana did. But now that King Charles is sick, 
the it it has been moved up. Let's also not forget that Georgia's overdue to go to boarding school. Um, hold on. Kids in Palace said they didn't confirm it, but you cannot say that the military, that the Department of Defense is Team Sussex because they like to blame Sussex Squad for everything. You cannot say that the Department of Defense is Team Sussex and is reporting wrong information. And again, Kinson and Powell did not say this was a lie. They just said that it is their understanding that, um, where is it? That Kinson and Palace was not consulted. Not that it was a lie or it was untrue, but that they were not consulted. You guys, they said, um, somebody, Comrade's granddaughter went on to say, Prince William is obviously an amateur. Carol and Camilla outclass him in PR. He has no one in his corner. Him lashing out at the Daily Mail hasn't served him either. The Telegraph was always, ooh, the Telegraph was always for Kate. Mirror is for any gossip. I agree. Daily Mail is Camilla's. They're saying that's why Carol Middleton went to paid six and TMZ. Again, what happened to Kate with William? That's what I want you guys also to discuss because why is she not going to be back till June 8th, right? It looks like Kate's beefing with Kensington Palace, okay? Um, again, there's a story in People that said the Middletons live a short car ride away from the Prince and Princess of Wales home base in Windsor, residing in Buckleberry, Berkshire, and a constant present in their grandchildren's lives, often having George... Charlotte and Lewis over for sleepovers. Now, to me, that sounds like they're hinting that she's been staying with her parents and they're the ones picking up the slack for the kids and not William. Let's get into this article and then I'll drop the call on link. All right. Um, this People Magazine article is clearly, in my opinion, sourced and planted by Carol Middleton. Let's go into this. This is all comes as a media onslaught after we see Kate in a car. Yeah, this divorce is happening. And you know what? It's not that I would be happy at someone getting divorced, but I just find at the end of it, Kate couldn't see that if William would treat his own flesh and blood that's been there for them, supported him, wanted the best for him, loved him. If he could treat Harry like that, so cold-hearted, to the point of he removed his security when he knows people want to delete Harry, Meghan, and the kids. When he wouldn't even look at Harry, when Harry flew over, when Harry was begging, please, I just want my wife to be safe. I just want my wife to leave these thoughts to leave her mind. I just want my babies to be healthy. And William said no and tried to punish and Kate got in on it because she's like, yes, William, we'll do it together because it did bring them closer temporarily. Why would Kate not think that William would do even more to her? Because at the end of the day, that is his brother. At the end of the day, they do have shared history. At the end of the day, at one point, there was love and caring there. Do you know what I'm saying? Kate never really thought it through. It's a, I, it scares me when I see people do it. No, don't get me wrong. There are the Thomas Markles of the world, the Uncle Gary. But when I see people honestly doing their family dirty when their family's good to them, it really scares me because I'm like, what are you going to do to me? Anyway, hold on. Let's get into this. Sorry, guys. They said Kate Middleton gets support from mom Carol as royal is spotted amid surgery recovery. The Princess of Wales hasn't been seen in public since Christmas when she attended church with the royal family um, as she recovered from her January 16th operation. They say Kate Middleton is healing with the support of her family. Kate was seen in a car with her mom, Carol, on Monday. Um, photos were obtained by Batgrid. This marks the first time the royal has been publicly spotted since undergoing the planned ab surgery. A source previously told People that in addition to her husband, Prince William, Kate's parents, Carol and Michael, will be there to lend support. That's when they said the Middletons live a short uh, car ride away and there's lots of sleepovers for the kids. Her parents have an, are an adoring factor in the upbringing of their children and they will be a reassuring presence when she goes back to Windsor to recuperate. The sighting comes after concerns regarding, again, go back to Windsor. They've been telling us Kate was already at Windsor. Remember, the kids were only at Sandrum for break, and then they're coming back to Windsor. Again, this is leading to the fact that Kate and the kids have been staying with Carol. Now, 
is Kate seriously ill? I believe the media. I believe something happened. And I believe that she's recovering. They said the sighting comes after concerns regarding Kate's welfare surged across the internet. Mm. Fooling, fueling a wave of conspiracy theories last week after William pulled out of a scheduled appearance at the last minute. Again, if Kate has not been staying with you, if you have not been helping with the kids, why did you pull out the last minute? Where did those bruises come from? Why do you have a suntan around your eyes that look like you were on a ski holiday? They said the speculation pr prompted the palace to make a rare statement about the royal's recovery. Um, they said the last time Kate stepped out in public was in Christmas when she when she was bragging that she was the royal racist. Um, da 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 they said that what now here's the thing. They said this is a great example to the rest of us. I've often told to get back to work as soon as possible, which can be damaging. It is good for all of us to see her taking time, recovering properly, and then coming back. We can all learn from that. How can we learn from that when you don't even say what it is? Like, so basically everybody that has a doctor's note, they got, like anyway, right? The source said the issue does sound serious and they expected her to bounce back. They said it does sound serious with the length of time she's taking, but she is in great hands and will have lots of care and support at home. And as a fit young woman, I'm sure she will bounce back. Um, let's see. Anyway, let me drop the link. What do y'all think? I think, honestly, um, I think the divorce announcement, I think these blind items are true. I think we are going to hear a separation. And I believe that Kate is going to come out with her war, if she can, at trooping of the color, if she can. This also might be Carol trying to hedge her bets because at the end of the day, she doesn't want anything to happen to her daughter, her investment, her baby, like whatever you want to call it. So anyway, you guys, um, here is, um, hold on. Meghan Markle was never, okay, let's just get some things straight, right? Meghan Markle was never a yacht girl. There is a picture of her. First of all, Meghan, if anything, was a goody two-shoes. She has a life well planned, right? Meghan, there is a picture of her on a yacht, which everybody likes to point to. That was a picture of her on her best friend's husband's yacht because they were having a bachelor party. There is no other picture of Megan on a yacht. Oddly enough, if you go to the Daily Mail, there's pictures of Kate actually being a yacht girl and working literally on a yacht. Her name was beautiful Kate. She was tolling around with Richard Branson. There was a lot of stuff uh, going on. Okay, now... No one knows what Kate was into, but we can definitively say that Megan was not a yacht girl. I believe Megan was married to the former prime minister of Canada's son. You do not like, can you guys be serious? And let me tell y'all something about Megan being a yacht girl. You guys might have it twisted in the UK because nobody really digs into the royals bat past because it's considered D class A. Please believe that a Megan Markle had any real skeletons in her closet, the way American media rolls, baby, we would have discovered all of it and put it on the front page of the New York Times. This ain't London where there's pay to play. Baby, in America, we dig into our public officials' backgrounds. If Megan was a yacht girl, if Megan was anything untowards, please, believe it would have been on entertainment tonight it would have been in page six it would have been in the blogs it would have been on youtube it would have been all over twitter we do not protect our celebrities in america at all so please please like i get it the dumb people over in the uk megan was a yacht girl because they only see the way the tabloids roll in the UK and they protect people. Tabloids don't protect people in the UK. You stand in the supermarket and there's stuff about how Trump is on his eighth love child and Barack Obama is from planet Mars and Hillary Clinton got a secret lover and Chelsea got a secret. They will make up pure fantasy 
and print it in the checkout lines. You really think that we're protecting celebrities like actors and actresses? You must not know American media. The fact that no one was able to find not one picture, not one speck of truth, not one anything lets me know Megan was nothing but a goody two-shoes valedictorian that really lived a life well-planned. You know what I'm saying? Again, listen, you guys can believe what you want, right? But the facts speak for themselves. You mean to tell me that the Daily Mail, the Mirror, the Telegraph, Pierce, MF, and Morgan all have proof that Meghan Markle was a yacht girl, but somehow not even Pierce Morgan, Jeremy Clarkson, Camilla, no one is actually calling her out on that? Why? 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 Again, cling to your little fantasies. I get it. You guys don't understand how Megan got to the room she got at. You don't understand what's so special about her, right? What's so special about her? And her exotic DNA. How does she bag Harry? How does she bag a prince? How does she bag someone that would probably never look twice at you guys? Well, she was exceptional. She was phenomenal. She is a kingmaker. Because look what she did to Harry. She got him his own kingdom in America. Complete with his own castle. She did save her prince. I know because you look at, you look at Camilla. You look at Kate, you look at all of them, and I'm not taking anything away from them, but they're not king makers. They married kings, right? As much as we say Cam Camilla was conniving, she was Charles's last choice, and she stayed around, and Charles loved her, and all this other stuff. But I get it. You don't get how Megan did it and how she got in those rooms. She got on her own merit, and she's phenomenal. That's what phenomenal. That's what happens. Simple. But again, I realize you guys, not you guys, but I realize the people that think Megan's a yacht girl, I realize they will never be around that type of excellence. They don't have it in themselves. So it's just hard for them to imagine, right? Every woman used her looks to get ahead, just like their queen and princess did. If anything, I will give shout out to Camilla because that might have been a little cunning because Camilla had been looking like curdled milk since she was 20-something years old, you know, since she was 21. Um, also, Anita Guzman said, yay, finally caught one of the lives. Just want to say I love your content, the way you give the tea. Always has me laughing on the edge of my work chair. Oh, thank you, Anita. I appreciate that so much. I also want to give a special shout out to, of course, my girl, Valerie. I want to give a shout out to... Um, um, SH, right? Uh, thank you so much. Congrats. Uh, listen, good luck with your exams. I also want to give a shout out to F Bard. Um, and of course, Sherry Katoa and uh Renee and uh everybody else that always sends me great royalty. Thank you so much, you guys. I really, really appreciate it. Okay, so let's get into this. The first person we are going to have join us is, hi, CK, how are you? Oh hi. my gosh, Tisa. Hi. Tisa. Oh my goodness. Hi. I want to give you your flowers. You have oh, just been you. on the grind over the past year and a half. I've really watched just your growth and all the different topics that you want to go into. So great job. Oh, thank um, you, CK. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, you know, just like you, Are I got you some on YouTube, notes. by the way? Yeah, so I started doing some videos a while ago, and I kind of fell off, but I need to get back on it, because, I What's mean... What's your channel? Um, it's, uh, it's C.K. Weiler, so I have a couple up there. Um, Pins Up with C.K. Weiler is kind of like my show, so hopefully I'll be bringing it back, but yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'll be sure to follow you and support. And you guys, if you're looking for people to support and to get the, the Sussex Squad community bigger, why don't you guys go give C.K. a follow and encourage him to get back in the fray? Thank okay, you. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Thank you, darling. Well, you got on something. You got me with the Sussex Squad. I was actually in London in October for work and I was out there for a while. British culture and all of that is something that I love, but just, and I know that you know this too, right? We can't ignore that this empire is the empire that like Henry VIII, like I was like, Catherine, they trying to Catherine Aragon her, is she in a nunnery? Like what is going on? Like 
these people, right, will do anything to keep and maintain power. But I feel like the sentiment for the royal family has really shifted once the queen is not there anymore. Thanks because they were so drawn to her or so many people over there, all they've known is the queen. And now they're starting to get exposed to the other royals that are out there. And I really think that, you know, it's it's changing. I don't know. What, what, what do you think about it? I mean, I completely agree with you. I know. So here's the thing. Who they say, I believe, who they think Harry and Meghan are, I believe it's Charles and Camilla. I do believe as much as people love the queen, it was her pettiness and vindictiveness that actually bought this down. The queen was never supposed to be the queen, right? It was a twist of fate. She should have abdicated, in my opinion, the throne when she was 50 or 60. Why Charles was young enough to either rule, and again, I'm not ageist, so you can rule at any age, but... Because they wanted to uh, punish Charles so much for the shame that him and Camilla bought to the monarchy and the way Charles really was like, I don't care. I'll give everything up for this woman I love. They went out of their way to let the press eat Charles around. But then the queen was the queen mother. So when she passed away, people are like, like you said, we don't like Charles. What is this? And they keep trying to align William. But for everything that people feel about Charles, Charles is a workhorse. William is lazy. So, yeah, I agree with you. I think public sentiment is shifting. But do you think it might be, and I want to ask you this question, do you think public sentiment is uh, shifting because of this new social media thing we live in? Like, they can't keep, they can't keep up. They don't know how to control the narrative. What's your thoughts on that? I think that's definitely part of it. Um, you know, the people that, the people that people or the um, the the people in the UK, I remember trying to say, the people in the UK are going to cling to are those that can really captivate them in different media channels, right? And are going to go out there. I don't think that we can do any more with people that just talk and wave and shake hands, right? Um, so definitely dynamic leaders. I think mm -hmm. one of your points is a is another good one. So we talked about um, Elizabeth ab advocating. Uh, early and moving over to Charles, but do you feel like Kate and William felt some type of way when the queen passed and Charles didn't do that, right? Because think of it, William and Kate have been sitting on this for over a decade. They've had kids, all of this leading up to it. The queen passes and Charles says, yep, I'm going to take my turn. But they, again, not trying to be ageist, but they're like, okay, you 70 years old, right? Yeah. What's going on? How does this work with Camilla? She was a courtesan or whatever, right? You yes. have it. We, we're we the ones that are poised. We have the key. Uh, we have the children. We have the heir. And I think that that might have also changed Kate a little bit too, because she went through all of these years through everything. Like even Harry talked about, right? The media going after her and all of that. And she's like, okay, I did this for all this time and I'm still not queen now. Is it mm. ever going to happen? Or is by the time I'm going to be queen, right? We mm. now have to give it to George. So this may be changing her mindset about the way that she lives her life. You know what? If Kate's healthy, which I, I don't think she is, that's actually a good point though. Because whether she's healthy or sick, that might actually change her life where... Charles isn't abdicating, right? Um, they're like, give up that throne. Kate never really did too much. I think, oddly enough, William has shown in the last month he is not ready or able to actually step up. But, you know, William's so used to being propped up, I don't think it's it's occurred to him. But you know what? That is something that, that's interesting to point out. Maybe Kate is sitting there thinking, what did I give my life for? This isn't as stable as I thought it was. I'm not coming into it. And how am I going to keep this monster happy for the next 20, 25 years, you know, after yeah. you've suffered for a good 10, 15 years? So, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Now, are you ready to go into the depths of the conspiracy theory with me? Yes, let's go. Okay, okay. Let's go. Do you think that this is at all connected to this Thomas Kingston guy? The, okay. Let me because, hear you. Because, okay, this is, this is what I'm saying. Okay, so all of the people, young royals, let's go back, you know, 20 years, maybe not 20, but like 15 years ago. Let's go back 15 years ago. They all ran together. So, you know, everybody that's kind of in that, it's kind of like debutantes, right? They're all moving around in those particular circles. And they're trying to figure out who the match in the pairings are going to particularly be. And okay. so I started looking at the different articles where it said, oh, it was alleged that he was with Pippa 
of this Thomas Kingston guy, right? Um, oh, it was alleged that he was with Pippa during the time when Harry, not Harry, William and Kate were going to get married. Or no, he was alleged that he was with one of William's ex-girlfriends. But what if, and I'm, again, the depths of the conspiracy theory, what if, right, it's kind of like a reverse Diana situation where she actually was in a relationship with this Thomas Kingston guy. Because if you go and look at him, unfortunately, I'm sorry that he what he did, he did, right? And okay. I, I hope that we find out what happened. But this was a good looking man. If you look at William, and uh, William is coleslaw. This man is macaroni and cheese That's that you can sop up with a biscuit. William, yeah, we thought William was going to age like Thomas aged. But exactly. I agree exactly. So all of a sudden, this man is going to go to his parents' house and unfortunately remove himself right and then we have oh she's going to go have this surgery or whatever so i'm just saying like maybe there was a baby but something kind of happened or something came out because it's it's too close for comfort with all of that going on i don't know that's me going into the depths of conspiracy but maybe kate and this man they've already known each other it was yeah. unofficially linked to the sister i don't know i'm just saying so actually heard and again this is just conspiracy that rose and thomas were also very cozy too now before mm -hmm. everybody says that's ridiculous i think maybe two things can be true at once let's also not forget that camilla princess Anne, and uh who is it uh camilla's husband uh mr parker bulls i forget his name yeah. they were in a love triangle for a while you know princess it's Anne nothing new to marry him it's, it's nothing, nothing new. new it's going on for centuries <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And even as far as Camilla and and um whatever Parker Balls, Camilla's husband, Camilla was the one that got him and never got over it. But then after him and Camilla got married, while she was seeing uh Charles, Anne was carrying on with Camilla's husband. So again, they literally just get married, I guess, like you said, for power, lineage, whatever, paired off, like you said, debutants, and then they do what they do discreetly. And that's exactly. it. Charles just broke royal tradition because he's decided, I don't want her to be my mistress. I want her to be a uh, queen. And he made it his life's mission. Maybe William's feeling the same way, assuming that, you know, the people that are around William are still around. But what do you think about that? Let me ask you a question. And this is just holistically before I go to the next caller. Thank you so much for, for sure. joining. Thank you for the what? time. Thank you. Oh, of course i loved having you but i have a question what do you think about everything holistically because it strikes me as odd that even the royalists this you know what the queen talked about the anna anus uh anus uh horrible right uh, charles cancer camilla who knows edward sick sophie out Princess Anne's husband has a black eye. The Thomas guy deleted. They there's something else that happened too. Oh, yeah, there's just all these things happening, and it all seemed to stem around Christmas. What's your take on that? I think that you know we have to just think about everything that that got the royals to the place where they are. It's really mm -hmm. the 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 comeuppance, right? It's the economy of scale of everything that's been going on, right? There had to be a particular tipping point. Now, I don't wish any ill will upon any of them, but mm -hmm. it's all the choices and things that are coming on. I also don't think there are very few places out there where they still have some type of royalty like this. I think there also needs to be a pulse check on the people to see if this is something that they even want to consider paying into right they all pay into this so i'm like what are they actually getting out of it um but yeah mm -hmm. that's that's what i think um I, yeah i wish I them all the best so but i mean i don't wish them anything except for god has in store for them it's above <laughs> me now like, i heard you with that bible that. verse you were like i'm gonna skip that verse where it said pray yeah. for you and i'm gonna turn the page next chapter i no i don't need to pray it's above me now like Whatever God says, I'll take happily. You know, if he wants them to thrive, then I'll be like, okay, Lord and Savior, whatever you say, right? But I do believe that maybe you're right. This isn't, it, it's nothing but like what karma is. It's a natural consequences for all their choices up to this moment have all come together. Mm -hmm. 
And now we're seeing the fallout. And again, like you, you make a good point. Maybe they were always a mess, but now that we have eyes on them, they're falling apart all at once. So that could be it. In that case, maybe William should have treated Kate better because I saw a tweet the other day that said the most, Kate's been around for like 11 years and the most interesting Kate, thing Kate did, ever did, was go missing. So I was like, <laughs> they should have, you know, it's like, this is the most That's the mess. ever done. All eyes are on the monarchy and they are folding before us. But part of it is you can't even blame Charles because he actually does have cancer. Camilla, I know if my mate had cancer, I would be by their side. Like, I don't know what y'all talking about. I'm going to stay by their side. It's curious that William is MIA, except to show up and go drinking with Tom Cruise and to have shots with the guy that started It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. So, yeah. Very odd. Um, yeah. I mean, whoever whoever the working royals are right now, they're going to be doing a lot of work because ain't nobody else to carry the load. Yeah, but you know what? We'll see who the actual working royals are because at the end of the day, like, it's just a mess. It is a mess, a mess, a mess. Like, it's just a mess. So listen, thank you so much for coming up, CK. I'm going to move over to Super Woo. Thank you so yep. much for joining. And listen, thank you next so much. live, I hope you call in again and Absolutely. get back into YouTube fray, okay? Yes. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Tisa. Okay. Bye. Have a good one. Bye-bye. You too. Okay. So next up, we have Super Woo. Hi, Super Hello. Woo. Hello. How are Hi. you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I just found you a week ago, and I find you awesomely entertaining and informative. So thank you for what you do. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet of you. Um, listen, Super Bowl, I'm really interested to hear. What is your take on everything? Jump in wherever you feel like. Let's talk, because I'm really interested to see what you guys have to say. I think it's a cluster flop right now. Like, <laughs> I think it's generational. It needs to go. It's just a freaking mess. And I think it's always been this way. And I think there's a lot of entitlement and mm -hmm. um, this hierarchy of who's in charge. It just, I think it's time for the monarchy to go. You know what? I think you're right. I was shocked when Megan came on the scene. I feel like Megan had the experience most Americans would happen. Like, it's like Disneyland. Like, you know, it's like when you have your senator. Yeah, you're a senator, whatever. But in private, you're just mom, dad, sister, brother. I think the fact that we found out they actually take it seriously, it's a bit of a shock. How do you think this Kate situation is going to affect, at least in your mind, how the monarchy looks and feels moving forward? I think they've broken all trust with this because all this stuff they projected on Meghan and Harry seems mm -hmm. to be unfolding with Kate and William, in my opinion, because they projected so much negativity towards Harry and Meghan that I kind of bought into. I was like, oh, yeah, you know, Meghan was this and Harry was that. But then I realized, no, I would probably make the same choices, too. But now, mm -hmm. you know, even down to Catherine, Kate, possibly being a yacht girl like that is a huge red flag that they were pegging on Megan and here was a Kate the whole time you know what I'm saying like it's it's just frustrating and I think trust is broken it might have been good for show you know and for you know the monarchists that enjoyed it that brought the camaraderie but I just think they uh, shot themselves in the foot no pun intended you know yeah you know, interesting you bring up the stuff about Megan and Kate and Yacht Girls. Again, there's all these phantom rumors about Megan being a Yacht Girl. And the only picture they can find is her on her best friend's yacht during a bachelorette mm -hmm. party. Um, but I find it interesting that the whole thing of the pictures of Kate being a Yacht Girl, they actually ran front page headlines in the Daily Mail of Kate on yachts, doing this, doing that. Now, who knows what because Kate was working on a yacht, but again, that just goes into Carol Middleton raising Kate and Pippa to be like, let's put you in the path mm -hmm. of wealthy men and let's make sure you hire wealthy men. You know, I do want to actually uh think about it. What 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 do you actually think is going on with Kate and William? I 100 percent believe that the separation is underway and that a divorce announcement that everybody said was coming at the beginning of the uh year 
it's still on track, right? Whatever happened with the sickness. But just from what you've been on Twitter, reading, or what's your just general sense about what is actually going on with her? I think the biggest clue for us right now is that she had scheduled events and mm. this turned into a planned surgery. And I know things could come up on the fly that you have to take care of, but she had a full calendar allegedly. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden she's out for the whole year. Earthshot wouldn't be till October, I believe, and that mm -hmm. she wouldn't be included with that. So to me, that's a huge, huge, huge glaring red flag and a big clue in all of this that something happened. There was also police on site on a certain day, and I haven't connected the dots there timeline wise. Like, what was okay. that about? That's shady as is. F. <laughs> what do you mean? Let's let's go into that a little bit more. What do you mean? Um, was it Sandringham that the police and ambulances came right around yes. Christmas time, the twenty eighth? So yes. I don't understand timeline yet how that all fits, but to me, that's where there's smoke, there's fire, and I think it's blazing right now. So now, as for what they're the future is like i hate to think of william being an abuser in that but anything is possible now yeah you know, all the lies they told about megan and harry that ended up not being true it's like they're just lying and putting on a show for us so but i wanted to ask you too um mm -hmm. what do you think about the uk and the uh citizen journalism like where are the people trying to snapshot the kids going to school, even if it's not ethical, you know, to me, this is like a serious thing. Um, I'm just surprised there's not more people spilling the beans other than like the Spanish nurses and that. Well, so I think this just goes to show the silent contract more than anything. Mm. Um, I 100% believe the reason why nothing has been snapped is because I think that it can't be snapped. First of all, I, I just want to put that out there. Whatever is going on, they cannot be snapped. But also, it's actually illegal to um, film oh, a, gotcha. somebody in the or photograph without their permission. I know that the royal family is very protected by. Um, uh, hold on, the the royal family is very uh, protected. In the UK, there's so much that actually is actually happening and going on. Um, yeah, I think that, but here's the thing early on, and I will always say this is it always struck me. I 100% believe that the reason we didn't see the kids is because the kids are so young, I don't think they can fake. George, yeah. even when he's walking through a crowd, you see his whole face. I just mm -hmm. don't think the kids can actually fake. And I think that's why they're keeping the kids. I found it odd also when people were asking in the beginning, are the kids actually in school while Kate was in the hospital? Right. Because the kids are also so young. You know how kids are that young. They're like, my mommy can't come to the phone right now. And you're like, no, I'm not supposed to be home. So kids right. are young, can't be any secret. So it'll be interesting that the kids are being kept out of sight which in a perfect world would be the way you do it. But we all know that they love using the kids, you know, to change the subject and to move things around. So I think mm -hmm. it's like really, really odd that the kids aren't around and they're not using the kids. Um, That's you what I'm know, saying. All to, their to moves to that they're do doing. More. Yeah, all the moves they're doing to me is calling more attention to the situation. This could have been done just say she did have surgery no big deal and then mm -hmm. she comes back to the fold but all their moves just makes it reek of something else going on and you know like i'm a former teacher i would totally be bending somebody's ear and being like the kids aren't at school you know yeah. what i'm saying like and and not out of disrespect out of just pure concern of you know, what's going on yeah. here? I mean, well, even me you know, talking to you now, I don't want men in gray suits coming to my door, tracking my IP address. You know what I'm saying? I want to be able to voice my opinion, talk with you, talk some cons conspiracy and live in peace. <laughs> well, yeah, listen, definitely. But I do believe that you're on to something with the fact that it's just, it's too many things for them to keep under control, but they're already losing control. 
even yeah, without they're the out kids, of control. Again, they just lost control of the narrative. Again, I think the separation rumors are true. I think it's coming. And again, you know, we are a family. We don't have to agree with each other, but I'm just looking for like, what else could it be? Because there's something coming. And for anyone just to say, oh my God, this is just our health. No, it's it's gone far past that. There is mm -hmm. something brewing in that house that they don't want to admit. But yeah. Um, Superview, thank you so much for calling in. I really, yeah. really appreciate you guys. You and CK joined on the first inaugural, uh, not first, second, but the first inaugural <laughs> call in. Thank you so much, Super Wu. I appreciate Thank you contributing you for having to the conversation. Me. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, let's move on to Gambit. Oh, Hi, up, Gambit. Man? How are you? It, Hi, how are how, you, Gambit? How you want me to go all in or are we gonna we're gonna play it safe? Um, can we play it YouTube safe? But please give your no, opinion. Okay. We're, gonna go, we're, we're gonna go all in. The problem that you guys don't see is it's much bigger than that. It's okay. like, if you look at it, what's happening, um, like this happened to me, and I'm in Argentina, man, for 20 okay. years. And I read 22 years, and I read all I was doing is searching for peace in every book I can find. Every mm -hmm. Buddhist, Taoism, everything. I was searching for peace, and I had a hostel for 10 years. So I had a network of people from Israel, from everywhere, from Palestine, giving me information. So the things you don't see it like when I went back to the United States and like uh, when the pandemic, it was so odd to see that I was off grid for so long that the mm -hmm. rap station, it was like in one hour in three spans of an hour, they were like, get the, you know, the shot under 18, you get help you in college. 21 okay. over, get free beer. After that, you get off raffled into a million. And I have a friend who is uh, number one in Berkeley for synthesis and music. And I study music, mafia, and cartel, and human trafficking. And he's like, why do you think they target the minorities? Because we know what happened to syphilis, how that started. Why do you think they all went locked down at the same time? Why is Yemen being uh, like locked down? The like kids are dying. The problem is they don't want a situation like what happened with Haiti. You know what happened with Haiti, okay. right? It was 10 I, I know one. what happened. But but before you go into this, it's YouTube, so they censor a lot of stuff. So because uh, of the live. I no, I anything. know, but like, let's just speak in code. But I do know what you're referring to with the Haiti. How do you think that directly relates to the whole right. what's going on with the royal family? All right, all right. Well, I've been to London. All right, I, was okay. been, I was there in 9-11. I saw the queen pass by. I went to Stonehenge, found the secret. There's a dagger there. Uh, I read I read the book Excalibur, um, the old one, the British in Latin. And the thing is, I think uh, London, they have no ethics, no morals. And the problem with this case that opened up that I've been studying that so much deep in the music I'm in, in here, that the, the case that study that went, uh, that Diddy, it opened up the case, you know, someone involved in the, in the court of yeah, England, they have no okay. ethics. They have no ethics, no morals. So when you and I and I read the Bible and I, I'm writing the Bible by hand, the Torah. And so when okay. you don't have ethics in your in your inner circle, like the round, if you have a round table, it don't matter who it is, it could be whoever the whoever in the world. If you don't have no ethics, no morals, and the point of power is these guys are so addicted to power. You have to read uh 48 Law of Power by uh what's the name that famous Robert. writer? Robert, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They will, they will kill you, straight up kill you. But the problem is, um, the situation is, like, what are they doing now? Like, this is just noise. You know, they're doing. What are they doing in the United States? They're affecting the kids. Like, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Columbia University, $89,000 a, a year. And they go to Harlem, and they're discussing uh, the body parts. of, a, And the people are in the university. That's our future. That ninety thousand dollars in the future, these people, but then Harlem know the truth about God and ethics, and this is what happens. You got you got a monarchy that that's so falling apart, that's so corrupt. I I I'm, I believe even when the queen died, I bet they put her on ice and started moving like moving like you know money around. Yeah. 
That's what definitely. I thought. No, so this definitely. I, yeah. I agree with a lot of the stuff that you are saying. Um, how do you think, given your view of the world where it is, where do you see things going for the royal family? Dude, I'm, I'm just going to tell you, like, there's a myth that King Arthur will come when, there's a myth in England when I was there, uh, he will come when, at, at, at the worst point of England. And England has had its worst point. Even if you're talking about terrorism-wise, it is the worst point, like, I'm in Argentina. This is how bad it got for me. Like the first presidency won the first round election. Then we have a mm. Nazi Nazi guy who told the Arabs that he likes how the Argentina is going. But 20 years, it was like, I'll, and 40 years, I was a Nazi regime. So it was really bad here. So when we yeah. got a new president, it, it gave us a little hope because I, I almost dipped the fuck out. Sorry about that word. But, and I think, you know, I think the construct of like when you can't trust the system, anyways. There's no king. There's no king. There's only Jesus. You know, these guys, it's like it's a, it's like the Rothschild. They interbreeded the banks to stay stay in power. So that's the, the key is the banking system. You know, there's one bank in the world that has only 80 clients. That's your problem right there. Yeah, so, definitely. So, that, so that's when people are going for gold. And, and what the funniest thing is. People are going for gold and money, but you know what I think is? Hmm. Look at the Amish. They have no Down syndrome, no nothing, no thought. They, they live off the land. Yeah. And we're getting pumped up full of stuff that we shouldn't be, we should be all natural. I definitely, you make some really, really good points, Gambit. Um, definitely. And you give us a lot to think about and consider. Thank you so much for yeah, calling in. in. I, no, I went all in. Sorry. I no, all listen, in. listen. We are a family, and thank you for. Let me let me just, let me just put it one way. Let me just put it one way. The England thing in the whole world that the uh, whole world went locked down at the same time. It's a population goes over. Why? Because there's so much minorities around that the power elites that want to stay power can't can't control it. So when you look at the Haitian Revolution, at that one mm -hmm. point, the slaves lasted one year, and it was ten to one. So yeah. imagine why did why were so many uprisings in every country that we've seen? They they, they turn, trying to control their. I see it now that it's on, beyond control. I think even Trump can't handle what's going to come next. Because if you go down to the death of Whitney Houston, what was going to happen in the United States when they found no, that case? Listen. Definitely. And listen, you bring up a lot of good points. We can't go down that rabbit hole, but I really, right. really appreciate you calling in, going all in. And um, I, I really appreciate so much for having your thing, Gambit. Can I just thank say you one thing? Apart. Well, one thing? I got to get to the next. Well, I have to get to no, the just next. One, thing. one, one, one happy thing. One thing. One thing. Okay. Read the Bible, be moral, ethics, and the, live by the golden rule. That's it. Listen. Treat thy neighbor as it. That's it. That's it. That's all we got. To from do. your this. lips to God's ears, read the Bible, treat thy neighbors. You would want to be treated and be ethical. Thank you so much, Gambit. I appreciate you joining right, us. Please. Okay. Have a good one. Julius, how are you? I am great, honey. Um, this is going to sound weird to say, but I've been thinking about this for the last little bit. Okay. This is the long overdue wrath of Diana. Uh, tell me why you think this is the overdue wrath of Diana. I'm in, all in because I Girl. have my theories. Why do you think this is the wrath of Diana Girl. coming? Because. <laughs> like. Just like her spirit, her persona, everything. I see it all through Harry. Definitely. And we all know the story of her. How she was okay. treated. Was she perfect? No. But there is still me, questions surrounding the accident. So let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. If you think this is the wrath of Diana... Does anyone think that Diana would have more compassion or sympathy for Kate? Because at the end of the day, I mean, from what I can tell with Megan, Kate was the worst to Megan, right? Mm -hmm. But but from what I can tell, 
you know, the princes of Wells and the men in grape, they just ground people down. So when it's the wrath of Diana, I would think that would happen to Charles and maybe William. What do you think? What where do you think this is going? The whole thing with William and Kate? Well, um the heat that William is getting now, because he disparaged his mother plenty of times. We okay. All, Charles has done the same thing. As far as Kate, um, I think she would have been sympathetic mm -hmm. because she knows the wrath of that institution. Okay. But she would be more sympathetic towards Megan. You know, you know, being alone and all of that and not having your mental issues attended to. Okay. She went through like a lot of depression and stuff. And they would not stop targeting her. Mm-hmm. Until, unfortunately, now she's no longer here. And, like, I hope and pray. Mm -hmm. I'm saying this as a spiritual person. Mm -hmm. I hope and pray that Kate is safe. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to come out that she has been unalived. Well, yeah, of course not. Yes, of course. Because I know that's something that we talk about in our comments and stuff, but that's just small talk amongst us. But I do feel that Willy Boy, man child Willy Boy, mm -hmm. decided to, as the song goes, buck if you up, I, and got a little crazy. Oh, you think that it might have been a DV situation that kind of got out of control? Is that what you're saying? Yes. And think about it. She's been very low-key. She Kate's been very low-key. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing. You mean since she's gone missing or before then? Because before then... Since she since was gone missing. And she's gone. Well, yeah, I think that's because she's been missing. Now, you guys, I do think there's something interesting going on in the fact of when you look at 2023, there was a lot of stuff going on. And I thought that Kate and William were on the same team. But now looking back, I don't know. Remember King Charles's coronation, right? The mm. way uh, Camilla had dress code. And then Kate came busting out looking like magnificent. She, she, she looked pretty. At, she was given a look. She looked very pretty at the coronation, but it was completely against dress code and super dis uh, disrespectful. They filmed a, an ad. They were busy filming an ad or a commercial to rain on King Charles's coronation thing. And I said, OK, is this William or Kate or both? But then his first event as king at the flower show. And, you know, if there's one thing Charles loves. He loves a garden. Mm. Right. They said that um, they love uh, filming a garden uh, and building a garden. Kate popped up and completely stole that shine. And there were all these things in the newspaper about, um, you know, it's dumb if King Charles feels jealous. It's this, it's that. And all this stuff was going on. And then we found out the Middletons were broke. So there was a lot going on at that time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm and, saying? So, and, and it's yeah. And the thing about it is, now, I'm going to just say it. Harry is bae. Always has been to me and always will be. He is bae. Yeah. Yes, I'm saying it. He is bae. He, he was always the scapegoat. He was always the one to be picked on. He was always the one to be belittled. Because, and he said it in the documentary that him and Megs did. When he was in mm -hmm. Africa doing philanthropy work and all of that. He, yeah. And it really showed him the world doesn't revolve around these walls, this institution, this code, this code of conduct. It doesn't. And we seen the transformation into the most caring, outgoing man that he is today. Mm-hmm.
And I think that now we all know Willie Boy was jealous because he got with Megan because, you know, he couldn't have mm -hmm. Megan for himself. But, you know, I say this in my Sophia Petrillo voice, I digress. Um, yeah. So how do you think this is going to play out with Kate and William? Do you think they're headed for divorce? Totally. Yeah, definitely. Totally. Well, listen, Julius, I want to thank you for joining. I have to get to the next caller. Oh, no but problem. thank you so much for joining. I appreciate it, Julius. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Tisa? Hi. 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 How it's are popping, you? Tisa. I'm chill. Hi, I'm how chill. are you? I'm good. I'm just doing my homework, Tisa. Okay. So what's yes. your take on this? What do you think is um, going to happen? And by the way, thank you for the shout out, Tisa, a few days ago. I truly appreciate it. Um, My Instagram, my old IG still got disabled. I'm trying to get it back because it's crazy. Yeah. <sighs> I know. So but I, thank I, I you so you much, Anthony. I mm. want to ask you two questions. Number one, um, I'm watching, Um, you know, have you watched Do You Know The Island? Do You Know The Where? Island? Dear or no dear island? Dear or no With dear Claudia? island? Yes. Yeah, Claudia show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, do you, uh, um, I don't know. I may sound, I may, I may sound funny, but do you think Meghan Markle might make an appearance sooner or later on the show? Um, you know what? I honestly do believe that, and this is just my personal opinion. I believe the future that holds for Meghan. I don't think she's going to go back to being in front of the camera. She might go back to producing, maybe making a cameo on her own project, the way she made a cameo on a commercial. But I, mm -hmm. honestly, this is just my opinion. I think that Megan might be in 10 years. I think she might be politically bound. I really <laughs> honestly do. I think philanthropy might be her thing. That's just my opinion. She has mm -hmm. a clean record like a politician. She cares about people. She's a natural politician. She knows how to connect with people. I could see Megan making the jump into politics if she was inclined and making the jump uh, successfully. Um, I think right now she's happy being a rich man's wife and a rich mother and doing philanthropy on the side. So again, and of course she's directing and she's getting back into the podcast, but I, don't know, I think Megan right now is in a really good place. And for her to be figuring it out, you think about how good they are right now that people have tried to crush them. And they're just chilling wow. right now. So I think it's wow. good, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I got, I got one more question, Tisa. Um, do yes. you think, I don't want to, I don't want to drive you crazy, but it's, it's, I'm, I'm happy that you're speaking. Do you think UK will ever become a republic? The UK? Yes. I don't know. I actually don't know. I feel like they just, yeah. I'm not all of them because, you know, I have friends in the UK, so it's not everyone, but they just voted for Brexit. So I don't have much hope for them. Like, I don't do, know. Do, do After that Brexit thing, I was like, yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> the reason why I, I asked you this is because um, my parents are, are Jamaican. Um, I, was a, I wasn't born in Jamaica. I was, I was born and raised in Brooklyn. Brooklyn in the house. Yes. I was born in Brooklyn. Um, Jamaica is about to become a republic sooner or later next year or maybe the year next. So because, mm -hmm. you know, people are getting rid of the, of the, of the queen. Some nations want to become a republic. They're trying to get rid of the Commonwealth. Yeah, they are trying to get rid of the Commonwealth for sure. But mm -hmm. I think the important thing to do is I think the Commonwealth nations will leave eventually. But really quick before we go to the next caller, what do you think about Will and Kate? Do you think that they are headed for divorce? <sighs> this is so messy. I, I, don't, I don't know, but all I can say is I hope they, they they work it out. If they don't, then it will be a problem because I have a feeling they have, they have a lot of royal structures may have to be changed if they eventually break up. And I don't want to see that. I want them to lead the UK in the right direction. I want them to get a second chance. They, they don't deserve to be bullied or treated badly. They deserve to be treated fairly at all costs, period. Definitely. Are we period. talking about Harry and yes. Meghan? Yes. Yes, definitely. and Willem, both of them, and Willem and Kate, they 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 don't deserve to be bullied so much. They deserve to be protected, loved, and treated with fairness and respect. Okay. 
I definitely understand what you're saying. I think they are treated with way too much respect. I think they are. I don't know. I don't know if I believe that bullies deserve to be treated with respect because when you respect bullies, they just want to bully you. But yeah. Anthony, thank you so much for calling in. It was so great to hear from you. I'm going to move you, on Tisa. to YM. You're welcome, Anthony. You're welcome. Um, okay. And let's add YM. YM, how are you? I am good, Tisa. How are you doing? I'm good. YM, jump in here. What is your take on all of this? My take is that this is like watching Game of Thrones. If one of the dragons decided she was going to be queen, and took her hot, fiery, oat milk tinted <laughs> breath. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I can't bust on Camilla without, <laughs> without cracking up a little bit myself. No. So yeah. I, <laughs> so if one of the old horses that, you know, like the dragons had made crispy was like, hey, I'm going to be queen. Then I think that that's what we're seeing here. Um, I, yeah. But what? First of all, I have three questions for you. Do you think that Kate and William are headed for divorce or do you think there's something else? Have you, do you have a theory? Have you heard anything about that? So I did. I, well, one, I just want to thank you for introducing me to the Sussex squad because I think I've been listening to your tea since you were just celebrating like, or just right before you were celebrating a hundred thousand uh, subscribers. Oh, so not from day one, but pretty close. Um, and I heard your royal videos and I was like, thank you, because they the YouTube algorithm kept feeding me deranger channels and all of the BS. They're like, oh my goodness, Megan breathe wrong. She's gonna take down the monarchy. And I'm like, get this crap out of my feet. So thank you for introducing some sense into the conversation. And I wanna say thanks for the live, but please keep doing the recorded videos because it helps so much to go against like all of the nutty people who are like, yes, Camilla is a timeless beauty. I mean, we know they're dumb, but obviously they're blind too. So th that, that goes for yeah. a lot. But for yeah. my, <laughs> we need it, we need it. No, so my theories for Will and Kate is that it's mm -hmm. been quite obvious for such a long time that they can't stand each other they do not like each other and every single time you would see a headline come out that said something like oh uh we, harry's sick of megan and it's not going to last you could tell that that was one of those articles that they did a copy and paste on the mm. same way, way that they had the kate your best friend one minute and your worst enemy the next and then like the squad found out that they just did a copy and replace and replaced harry's name that's yeah, what they've for been those doing. Guys that don't know what she's talking about. Sorry to interrupt. Um, there, while Kate was missing and going through surgery, there were all these weird articles saying Kate is like your best friend one minute and the worst, and basically making her seem like an unstable, unhinged lunatic. And they kept posting the uh, the 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 stories and then pulling them down, replacing Harry, cut and paste and reposting them. So it, it, take us back to those early days because they were playing games. It was so odd. It was, I mean, well, so I think for people who don't keep up with stuff, that's what, th that was their audience. And, you know, like I said, when you started covering the them, it was refreshing because it lined up. They, there was like a crazy body language guy who was like, Look at the way that Megan smiled. You can tell by her right tooth that she's a psychopath. And I'm like, dude, shut up. I'm like, it you're is very lucrative to hate Megan. It, it's very lucrative. I to, to really, really, really hate Megan. It's very lucrative to side with the royal family. But oddly enough, I'm surprised how easy it is for people to make their fortunes just by not liking Megan. Oddly enough, they're, they've tried, and I'm going to get your opinion on this, they've tried to make this about Harry and Megan so much since January 16th. That's when Megan, I'm, I'm sorry, that's when Kate, like, you know, started being MIA that we knew of. Um, but Things have gotten so out of control that they don't even have time to write anything about Harry and Meghan. What do I, you think about that? I uh, Listen, I think that William got the attention that he requested. He can't do it by being competent. 
he can't do it by being good looking. He can't do it by having an, a sincere, caring wife who can demonstrate that to people. He can't do it through his work ethic because right now the monarchy is literally dying in front of our faces. They trotted out this old uh, 88 year old dude who's, you know, like he's barely hanging on to life. You've heard of the National Register of Historic Places? That yes. man is on the National Register of Historic People. He is falling yeah. apart, but they're like, we got to keep him out here. We got to push him out. We are not going to let him retire because darn it, he's a royal. And, and listen, it's giving weekend and Bernie's. I saw that guy. I think it was the Duke of Kent or something or other. Who and, knows? Yes, that li literally when I tell you he's falling apart, check out one of his ears. Literally a piece of his ear fell off. And who knows what other body parts are like, I'm out of here. His body is trying to quit him. Like literally his body is trying to quit his soul. He's like, can, can I go? Can I go? And they're like, nope, you've got to go and cut a ribbon at a local envelope factory. He's like, oh, okay. Exactly. I, it's, I mean, exactly. Nuts. no, exactly. Really quick. I just want to um, give a shout out to, um, listen, Mac Pop, thank you so much for becoming a member. Uh, T oh, I'm sorry, Mac Pop, thank you so much for the super chat. TJ, thank you for becoming a member. And also the Diva Who Mangas, uh, says, Tisa, 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 you got me hooked. Keep telling fabulous. Thank you so much. We also have Dory Angel said, hello, Tisa and chat. Is it CK Weiler 4825? Thank you for being you, uh, Tisa. I think that is CK's uh, channel. And also we have Eber Berglund. Um, thank you so much for the super chat. We appreciate that so much. And of course, Daughter of Christ, thank you so much for uh, the super chat. One last question I got to ask before we go, right? Um, how long do you think before we find out what's really going on with Kate? Because the media is itching to say something. They all claim they know. How long do you think we're, till we're going to find out something? I actually have an answer for you. And That's I know you like to pull on threads. So go down this one. It is This one is not conspiracy. Although I have some. They involve a Timu wig. Um, I think like a Shein fake princess and whatever else they've been trying to pop up in, in Carol Middleton's car and pretend it's Kate. Okay, okay. but not that one. Uh, we're going to pull back the conspiracy a little bit here. I want you to look into UK super injunctions. Now, a super injunction um, is something where it's a, it's a legal thing. So free speech works differently in different countries. Here, okay. you can basically go and say whatever craziness you want. And it's a pretty high standard, especially if you're a public figure, to okay. sue someone for libel or to get it taken down um, because of the free speech laws in the US. The UK is nowhere near the same. In the UK, okay. if you say like that, a case is going to harm your right to privacy, they have what's known as a super injunction where details cannot be reported to the press and the fact that there's an injunction against reporting on it can also not be reported. So what I strongly suspect is happening now is that the reason you see the Spanish media, the reason that you see occasionally the US media with tidbits Whoa. and nuggets that the UK doesn't have is because the super injunction does not apply beyond the UK. Now in the UK, if you get a super injunction and there's one case, um, that involved a footballer, aka a soccer player for the US people named Ryan Giggs, G I G G S, and you can look it up. Um, he, like, there was a story in a newspaper about an affair that he had with someone. He got a super injunction, and basically, like, until that expired, they couldn't report on that story. And okay. the reason was just that he said that it was his private privacy or whatever, but like even the person he had the affair with couldn't yeah. speak on it because she was like her she was also covered under that super injunction. So oh. now that oh. the whole reason these royal rotor rats are not really able to come out with stuff that they probably know. And they it it could be DV. 
Um, look at how Camilla went to a DV center um, very like soon after Kate went missing. Okay. And we all know that woman knows how to send some signals and she will, True. you know, be as devious as she wants. But they can't report anything past that that would touch on something covered by a super injunction. There's also something that wow. they title, I think, a hyper injunction, which extends beyond the press to parliament. So even if a member of parliament um, were to become aware of something that, let's say hypothetically, a royal prince did to his princess that caused her such physical distress that she had to take months off to recover, mm. they could not speak on it and they could not report it. And I think getting a little bit back into conspiracies, those stories that you see saw come out that said, what would happen if William committed a serious crime yeah. are a really good place to look. Maybe yeah. it's related to Kate, maybe it's related to this Thomas guy, but I'm telling you that there, I, I guarantee you, if I had to place a bet, there's a super injunction right now in place around a lot of stuff that happened um, to, to Kate involving William that no one is legally allowed to talk about. This is a good point you break up, bring up and one that kind of went over me. If you guys haven't been following along, she is saying, because I was like, when is the media going to start talking about it? She's saying that because the British royal family has so much power and so much power over the courts, they're not not talking about it to be polite. They're not talking about it because you can go to court and get a super injunction, meaning if you talk about this, this invades my privacy. And that's why there's been this weird media blackout where people are just acting like everything is completely normal and they're just trying to walk around the issues. And why they might actually be saying, we all know what's wrong with her, but we're going to give her her privacy. Not because they care, but just because they have that super injunction. And you're right. They do send signals. Camilla, she was out there going to women's domestic violence. And also these things about what would happen if William was charged with an actual crime, you know? Yeah. This is, the again, that's one thing I will say about the British UK media. They are very cheeky with their sim with their signals. They like to plant things one after the other. You know, even how they planted, I think, in the front page about it was really dark, but like some woman feeling like she wanted to delete herself and then exactly. putting a, a headline about the Princess of Wales. And it's just like, what are you guys trying to say? But maybe that's why they're not saying it. That's because exactly why they do it. Super injunction. And so that, Tisa, the next the, the next time you're looking for tea and you see those headlines next to each other, um, it very well could be a signal that they are trying to send while staying within their legal bounds. My final note on that, if you um, don't, well, I, I'm sure you believe, but for everyone out there who's like, no, oh, that's crazy. Um, the, it recently came out that Ryanair had this ad. Um, and Ryanair is an Irish company. <laughs> Do you know what you know where I'm going? Have a seat. Yes. Yeah, we're like, have a seat, William. Yeah. And the, the arm was raised and kind of looked like a peg. Hmm. But mm. they intentionally did not say Prince William because they said it could be any William. But the I palace. Yeah, the palace took it down. They're like, no. So in addition to how poorly they treated Megan, just like with the overt leaking and stuff. Keep in mind that they've always had this in their pocket. It's the same reason I believe that you probably didn't read much more about Rose and William and yeah. whatever their alleged relationship may be because of that. And I'm just going to toss this out there. This mm. is, of course, getting into conspiracy. Okay. Isn't it interesting that... One senior member of the royal family. Yeah. Let's call him Billy. Yeah. With three hair. Billy with the three hairs. Billy with the three hairs only has a team, a high level team of gay men around him. Not saying there's anything wrong with that, not implying there's anything wrong with that, and not at all suggesting that, you know, anyone should not have opportunities because of how they identify. But 
if you notice, Christian Jones, um, all of these other people, all of William senior staff members are all openly gay men. Every last one of them, the future king surrounded by a bunch of queens. Okay, so really quick, let me just interrupt right there. First of all, B, what's up? Girl, we have to, I have to we have to talk, right? But really quick, um, thank you, B, for gifting five memberships. I owe somebody a Christmas present. Uh Karani Klee got gifted Soli 846, Prissy Poodle, Lynn E, and of course Wani R all got gifted memberships. Thank you so much. I will say this. I remember there was a write-up. I forget the site it was called, but it's a site that chronicles royal gossip, but from a historical perspective, I forget what it's called, but it, it they have a lot of credibility. It's almost like Tatler, but Tatler goes into, it goes into more historical. They did a write-up about Rose, William, the dynamics, what's going on, Kate being desperately in love with uh, William, Kate. Uh, firing her private secretary because she was helping book. It was all this stuff, but it was the way it read. It's like, I don't know why this sounds so believable. And it wasn't a blind item. And they actually uh, had to pull that whole story down. Um, but it's so funny. One thing that they did say that always stuck in my head when they say that William acts butch, they use that wording when he's out and about because he's much more effeminate and chooses to be that way, but Kate doesn't care because she's desperately in love with him. I don't know why he hires gay men. The thing is with William, he's so fawning. Maybe he just likes the attention. Do you know what I'm um, saying? Like, I, he well, can't uh, have course. women aids, can he? You know? Not well, not necessarily that, but you know, I and and again, I'm sure that throughout history, it probably wasn't widely reported. I'm sure that there have been previous LGBT members of the royal household and the royal staff in the past, for sure. Um, but there have also surely been some that had families of their own um, yeah. that you know were interested in women and and had those things. So. I'm just saying I, I I can't recall like even from history, like for some of the royals where they suspected that they were part of the, you know, part of the rainbow, that yeah. they all had um enti entire stabs of people who may fulfill some of those uh so, interests, let's say. So listen, it doesn't matter, but I do believe when it was rumored that Jason Knopf was running Williams online mm, troll farm, if you want to call it that, but he was doing social media, right? I do remember that he, it was exposed that he was like one of the commenters and stuff. And every single time in the comments, they'd be like, yeah, he's daddy. Like there would be bots or whoever being like, yeah, he's daddy. He, I like the, it was just weird the way it was like i remember me and my cousin were like what is this weird psychosexual like it was just a weird spin to what well will already will already told us his favorite emoji is the eggplant so i mean <laughs> exactly and the pegging so you know what again and like like i said i and and this is this is with no no absolutely zero animus or uh or hate towards the lgbt community at all live your be your authentic self live it out loud and proud but if you were in such a position where that would be the one thing that was perhaps unacceptable in a future monarch and you had to spend your time basically, you know, playing around that or not acknowledging that, not being able to express that in some way, not naming any names, but I can see how that might cause some not so great behavior yeah. from someone. You know what? I think you might be on to something really quick. I also want to say thank you to KG for um, the generous super chat. So listen, YM Droid, thank you so much for coming in. Sussex Squad, thank you so much for joining. 
I'm going to try to go live tonight, but there is news coming in that I'm going to do a video on right now. But most of it is that Camilla demanded William go back to work for a week. But reports are coming in that William just announced that he's taking another week off from work. But it's been pretty much confirmed that he's not taking care of. Um, hold on. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. We just got breaking news. William just said he's taking another week off of work. And it looks like somebody got a hold of Kate Middleton because the BBC News, this is breaking news, just announced that the army is to remove the claim that Kate is going to appear at Trooping of the Color from its website. And Honey Brazen Hussy on Twitter said, there it is, people. Kate's not coming back. I have to go investigate this, but hold on. Let me, let me do a little bit more. Hold on. Before we go, let me just pull up a little bit more because this is coming in breaking news. Karma's granddaughter says the marriage is done. The problem is there is no Queen Elizabeth II to order them to stop the shenanigans and announce the divorce. King Charles the Weak can't control his son. Kate Middleton is hiding from him and issuing separate brief briefing. Kensington Palace, it looks like has been confirmed, is William only. Again, this is so unprofessional. It is an issue. They're drawing everybody into their argument, but it shocks me. I mean, shocks me that people are not reading the law, the, the writing on the wall. Carol shows up, Kate's doing this, she's issuing, and now they have removed the claim that Kate was to appear on Trooping on the Color. And all Kinsen and uh, Palace said was, well, it hasn't gone by me. Um, listen, <laughs> the Heartstone said, and I think you'll find this very, very funny before we go, because we got to say it. V Heart Stone on Twitter said, imagine refusing to peg your husband, the future king, and thinking divorce wasn't coming. She's thick. She's too thick and delusional. <laughs> I'm sorry. That just tickled me. But it does look like something is coming down the road. Kate tried to make a rogue move. It did not work. Um, it didn't work. And yeah, it is what it is. What do you think about this? So basically, Kate's mama tried to put out, oh, yeah, she'll be there. And William said, no, sit down, sit down, girl, have a seat. Woo. <laughs> uh, Kate, you've been in danger, girl, but she really, I, I hope somebody can wheel her or cart her uh, to a safe location if she is not in one. Yeah, SD and Dio of Love says, what the F is happening at Kensington Palace? This is so weird. We are watching things unravel before our eyes. They said, William and Kate, if that can be believed to be Kate, both look like junkies. One is in rehab, one in rehab after a bad dot, 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 and one barely functioning on the outside. This is pathetic. England's future king and queen need help. Where are the top tabloid gutter rats to help them? Now, I will say that, um, again, I, I, I'm not saying junkie or anything like that. I, obviously, they were trying to be funny. But there is something really, really weird going on. And something that is it's just blowing up even more. Why is there a, a an argument about whether Kate's going to actually appear or whether she can't appear? This is really, this is really, really weird. The I have to are trending the, right now. Go on. Do you think, do you think that will slip something into one of Kate's extensions? I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Like as much as I laugh about what's going on with Kate, I'm like, no, literally what is going on? Because it, it's getting really, really weird. But I'll it's tell you, I, so for I, I I do agree with you that Charles has at least shown some interest in becoming king, not just in the title sense, but in terms of him establishing a legacy where he would do something. Yeah. You know, we all know about Will's borderline failed projects, Earth Flop that no one attends um, or cares about. That's you know really weirdly planned out, but he's at least shown some interest. 
unfortunately, I think with him, him marrying Camilla, I believe is the downfall of the monarchy because now it's accepted that a king can be divorced, um, that they mm-hmm. can, you know, like that they can bring their mistress onto the throne and it's acceptable. The whole reason that divorce was such a big thing, um, and I say this as uh, someone who was uh, raised Anglican, which is basically the U.S. version of the English church, the whole mm-hmm. reason the church was started was because the king wanted a divorce and could not get one on any legitimate grounds. So now for the king, who is still the head of the church, to say, you know what, all good, we can be divorced um, and still do that. You know, we can bring a, we can bring our concubine onto the throne, and now we have the queen consort who's up there. There is nothing to prevent William from doing the same thing. Zero. I agree with you. I agree with you. I just know that the monarchy is in crisis. I knew when they did that stuff to Harry and Meghan, not the fact that it would just come back to them because of how they treated them individually, but the fact that they were so tone deaf to the world being like, you're being blatantly racist. Like you said, you're being blatantly this. Where do you, did you not think this was going to come back to you? Um, they, I yeah, really- well, I, they, they've been in that boat. So, okay. My honest opinion is that basically the monarchy is like a cult. When you okay. have been raised in a cult with people reinforcing your beliefs for such a long period of time, and if you think back historically, it has been, oh, you've got the magic blood of the sorcerer's stone, um, and that's why you deserve to be here. Yeah. They truly believe that. So <laughs> Megan and Harry were just like too much of a shock to that system because here comes this outsider. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I'll, I'll not even say that it's about race at this point, but here comes this person who's outside the system, who mm-hmm. is articulate, very well spoken. Uh, she's made her own money. She's come in with all of these things that you've previously been told and told yourself only come if you have this magic blood. And yeah. if you are, you know, kind of part of this system of the magic, whatever. So for her and for Harry to select some like someone like that, they thought, oh, okay, well, surely we'll just make up a couple of rumors. We'll send some BS out there on the newspapers and, and, and that'll be the end of them. Because for anyone else, for any minor Aristo, I think like, mm-hmm. you know, maybe it would have worked. And just the fact that it didn't was just too much for them, but they still haven't gotten it. They're still in the cult and they're still playing by those same mm-hmm. rules that say, oh no, well, it's coming from the king or it's coming from this palace. And of course, everyone knows that that means more than what people can clearly see for themselves. And unfortunately, to your point about social media right now, we can see things with our own eyes. We don't mm-hmm. have to wait on official photos we, from people. We don't have to wait on official statements to put two and two together that something does not add up um yeah. so yeah i just no, I, 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 no that you make some really good points i completely agree with you um i agree with you and i think maybe that's one of the reasons why william treats kate so bad because on a certain level he does you know agree like i'm from the sorcerer stone and i plucked you out of the trash and back to the trash you go i do think that there's an internal power struggle. I do think that Will, that divorce is coming. I think that he plans on phasing Kate out. I think this was Kate, same thing she did with King Charles, trying to, or maybe Carol, proving you might divorce me, but I'm not going anywhere because I will still be recognized outside of you. And I think William just pulled rank and said, absolutely not. You will go away. And you will go away quietly. If they're now saying that her first appearance has not been confirmed to be Trooping of Color, that means when's the next time we're going to see her? I think this is it. I think that Kate is just going to retire to a private life. I think that if she's okay, I think that she's not going to have a say in it. And I think she's just going to basically give take whatever William wants to give her. Um yeah. Honestly, though, super injunction or no, um, I think palace system or no, 
<laughs> I don't think that Kate has real fans. So not the way that Harry and Meghan do, because the people who are interested in them, it's genuinely, it's generally because of how they've proven themselves. Kate mm -hmm. has always just been basically a showpiece for for coat dresses, uh, yeah. you know, like some high street jewelry and bad hair extensions. So that's that's been her role is to be seen but not heard. And she played the game the way that they wanted her to. She was not too vocal about anything. She was not too outspoken about anything. So she really doesn't have um, True. the the same kind of footprint where of, of that that said people will miss her or people will at least ask questions because i think even as it gets further along originally they said she'd be back around easter then it moved out to keeping of the color which they're now saying oh no that's a mistake so mm -hmm. the late the further they keep pushing this the more that questions are going to come up and i think the more solo appearances that will does the more weird it's going to look because, you know, I, what what exactly short of a near catastrophic car crash, honestly, takes that long to recover from that you can't be seen in public? I think there I, I think, again, uh, nothing. And, like, and then if you, yeah. just, just imagine trying. But and then if that's the story they go with, that this is some like just severe, very serious medical thing. How would it look? for will to drop divorce papers on somebody who was just recovering from being so seriously ill i mean i don't think that he's thought this through maybe like he's still charging ahead and trying to set things up to get the public comfortable with him being yeah. a single man i think but, that's what it is yeah but i you know i i don't know that there are enough injunctions uh, or press favors that they can call in because historically that's the other thing will has not really played the game as much i mean the system protects him because he is the next in line for the crown but it's not because he's been savvy as much as camilla's hoof prints are all over a lot of the um trash that comes out around harry and megan you have to admit she's at least been savvy about it she has yeah done something to like really get those people on her side and yeah. William has never actually done that he's just basically shot back with I'm the king and so you better not I'm going to be the king you better not write about this yeah no I definitely agree with you with this 100 percent this is I think you've summed it up totally what's going on and how deep this actually goes and how they're willing to let this happen. And Kate literally is, like you said, she is a victim of doing what she says, playing into the narrative. So in the way her being the perfect royal woman pretty much ensured that she wouldn't have the hearts of people because she just did what they she told, which is to be small and shrink herself. And now that she actually needs to be in the hearts of people, people are like, eh, whatever. Um, it's really sad what's happening to Kate. I mean, if she wasn't such a racist, I feel very, very much sorry for her. But there is something about that royal institution. You made a good point about they're not evolving quick enough. You know, we keep looking at, at uh, social media but even the way, oftentimes when there is elitism and classism, the next thing there is is racism. And if you can avoid the racism, there's always sexism. Maybe the house is collapsing in on itself because at the end of the day, they, they, the sexism will just crush any woman on top of the other isms that are there. So you make a good point about the fact of they are like just a victim of their own making and no matter what happens they will always find a way to mess things up because they don't value women they don't respect anybody who is not a white rich elite blood lineage white male you know exactly and, even, and like, I, I yeah. think even, even when it comes to their marriage i believe that to some extent kate tried to play along because historically in those aristo circles they've all slept with each other i mean the listen the queen was married to her cousin so <laughs> let's not yeah. act like it's impossible for you know some branches to start crossing or 
uh, intimate relations to happen between people where they shouldn't. So yeah. it's, you know, like it's not out of the realm of possibility that their good friend down the road would also be the king's or the prince's mistress. And I think that to some extent, Kate may have been, she may have just turned a blind eye or thought that in her role, she, I think she did, and let, let's not forget that Rose Hanbury basically did a cosplay at the coronation of an outfit down to the shoes that Kate had worn the day before to one of the coronation events. So maybe things are closer than we think. Really quick, I want to say thank you so much, Lacrise Kid. Um, CK Weiler, thank you so much for the super chat. He says, ain't nobody working for you, Tisa. I wouldn't say that, but I appreciate it. Damo said, uh, seriously, oh, really? She says, you know nothing about the UK. Judges ban talk about it. A case to make sure a jury pool isn't contaminated. What? I think that's in response to the super injunction, in which case, Damo, Wikipedia is your friend. It is, but thank you for the five pounds. That's like what six US dollars. We appreciate that, Damo. You are the best. Thank you. I you know what I will say about the Rangers? They have like they they're, will, committed. <laughs> they're committed. You're even sending your money to talk trash. Bravo. Bravo. Thank you, Damo. LaCrease Kit gifted a membership. Miss Drea 68, welcome to the title tells. And Jermaine Lawrence, thank you for being the newest, youngest member. And Damo, thank you so much for the super chat. Do any other derangers want to come and say anything? We can start charging them $50 a comment. They'll pay it. You know, <laughs> they already follow the grift that is the royal family. Why wouldn't they pay money, right? They're used to licking boots in order to have a royal family. So we should make them lick our boots too. The price just went up. If you want to make a comment, it's going to be $50 for all derangers. The price just went up. Oh, can I, can, can I help you? Oh, okay. It, exactly. And it's going to be, it's going to be a hundred. If you want to defend Camilla as a timeless beauty. Exactly. It's going to be a hundred. If you want to defend Camilla as a timeless booty. It's going to be a hundred. It's going to be a hundred. It's going to be a hundred. Send me your money. Let's see the things. You know what? Let's, let's provoke them. I don't think Megan was a yacht girl at all. You know, they love that, right? I think is it possible is that, that, is it possible <laughs> that perfect English Rose Kate is not actually perfect for William and that William is not that bright? You know what? I will say this, and this is the last thing I'm going to say before I go, because we've been on live for a while. I appreciate everybody, but I do have to say this, right? Um, I think we overestimated William. I think this is the classic emperor has no clothes. I thought with everything that was going on with Harry and Meghan, the, he, William was cunning. He was this, he that. Now I just see he is just a child throwing tantrums. There is no premeditated plan except to be as extremely cruel as possible and i'm glad that harry left and they are now in america building their fortune making their connections starting their life because i do think that once william becomes king he will use the whole nation to try to destroy harry i really honestly do i think they'll have to pull it away from him and be like that's enough in which I say, I think William 100% will be the fall of the monarchy. because William's 100% one, William's going to self-immolate. He is, when okay, so when I have joke, but not joking at all, say that he's not that bright, I really, I, I truly think that he thinks he's doing something and playing 3D chess. Meanwhile, he's moving like the Connect Four into the same exactly. spot over and over again, not making exactly. anything connect. It, it's you could see just even from his appearances, um, not even the one where he was uh, swaying in the wind and just starting starting to list back and forth uh, casually like he was about to break into a slow dance or something. The one yeah. where he went to the Baptist party with those actresses and their face while he's he's there braying like a donkey and they are looking at him just aghast 
like, what are you laughing at? That's I be, I believe that that's more interactions than we usually get to see on camera, but I strongly suspect that that's a lot of it. And it comes from him not being prepared, him not being interested enough to prepare for anything, him not being bright enough to realize that when he doesn't prepare for something, he sounds absolutely ridiculous and mm -hmm. that no title is going to make up for that. Exactly. No, I completely agree with you. I completely agree with you. But listen, you guys, listen. Thank you so much, JD, for joining. Thank you for another Royals Live. You guys know I can talk about this all day. I got to get back to work and film some stuff because Ish is going down with the Royal family. But you know what? This was so um, enjoyable, YM, and for everybody. You know what? I'm going to go live tomorrow. There's not going to be quite as much call-in. Um, email me. Email me, tisatells at gmail.com if you guys want to go live, if you want to talk, um, and I'll put you on the call-in list. But we're going to go live tomorrow because I do agree one thing you're saying, YM. And YM, make sure you email me. I'd love to stay in touch with you. Um, it's going down. And I agree what you're saying about it is all falling down. And that super injunction definitely it definitely, definitely explains so much. But anyway, you guys, Sussex Squad, thank you so much, YM, and everybody that joined. I really appreciate it. And I will talk to you guys later, okay? Thank you again, guys. Oh, okay. Bye, everybody. <laughs>